<laughs> Come on. It's Friday afternoon. Welcome to the Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes, and this week I'm joined by Lloyd Patrick Jepson. Last week, Lloyd, we could barely fit on the screen. There were five of us giving our views on Celtic. This week, this week it's just us. It's just you and me. Yeah, but no, that's all right. Just, just when I thought my head couldn't get any bigger, there you go. It's, yeah, it's massive now. Indeed. Listen, I could stretch that screen a wee bit bigger if you wanted. Please don't. Um, I'm going to start off by, you love a Celtic jersey. You've been involved in the Sell the, the Jerseys initiative for We Jamie Tierney. You have donated mm -hmm. some crackers. Um, but there was a suggestion a few weeks back after the final game, actually, when we first wore that third kit. That is the third kit, right? Officially, I know people get a bit pedantic about it. That's the third kit. It's definitely the third kit, yeah. Right. Um, and it looked brilliant. And it's one of the jerseys that I didn't dislike it when I saw the promo shots. But when you've seen it in person, in action, it looked so much better. There's been a lot of jerseys down the years where that's been the case. And I suggested that it looked even better with the Celtic FC Foundation logo on the front. We put it out there. You asked, I think, JP or the shop. They came back to you yeah. with a, a response. What was the response they came back to you with? Lloyd? Yeah, they did come back with a response, um, which was actually quite surprising. Brilliant for the club to actually get back to me on it. But the response was obviously they couldn't do it due to the sponsorship reasons with Alphabet, which I can quite rightly understand why that's the case. So... Because of that and the contract situation there, they can't actually put the foundation logo on any of the jerseys, apart from the player ones. It's a shame, a shame, isn't it? Yeah. It, is, it really is. And I know this, the, the sponsors, they come and go with us with regards to doing it for the European Games in particular and for other occasions. Excuse me for a moment. Some people might want me to remain muted. Um, however, you, the suggestion was they could just sell the transfers. You can take mm -hmm. them up, heat press, and that's that's fine. A lot of people don't like gambling or alcohol sponsors on the jerseys. The club can't do it for sponsorship reasons. I'm pretty sure you can find them on eBay for nine ninety nine, and then find somebody with a heat press who could do it for you. If that was your thing, if you've got an unsponsored jersey, Lloyd, two big games coming up. And just before we started the Axon Bull in this afternoon, you were telling me a game at a time, Paul. But I just think going into Motherwell, by the way, who are going really, really well under Kettlewell, You've got to have one eye on Lazio. So we're going to go through each of the areas of the park. I'm going to get your thoughts on it. I know that facing Motherwell and then facing Lazio are two completely different propositions. So we'll have a look at everybody that's uh, available, who's going to be playing, who's not and why. And uh, I, I also was just telling you there, I'm not going to give too much away here, right? But yesterday and today, we have been engaged in organising the jerseys, the kits, for the Celtic Select team, who will be playing St. Rock Select up at James McGrory Park two weeks on Sunday. And all I'm going to say, because I can't reveal what the Celtic team will be wearing, it's going to be sensational. It's going to blow you away. That's all I'm allowed to say, Lloyd. Now, Stephen Sloan comes right in. That photo of Martindale and Bill laughing together after the game is bizarre. Can you imagine if Rangers beat us 4-0 and Brennan and Bill were laughing together? Our fans would be in meltdown. Yeah, you know, that, that image alongside the Derek McInnes image after the game where it's all pals and laughs and handshakes and all that stuff with the officials. Uh, people will call us paranoid, of course, Lloyd, but it was all a bit pally-wally, especially when you look at the lack of fouls. Livingston will foul us 17 times, but they'll foul Rangers five times. It was almost as if they were holding back. Hmm, Interesting, that, isn't it? It, it just is. puts, it adds to their paranoia status on that one, I think. Um We'll never really get away from that because you see the pictures of Beal and whatever other manager. And I don't see Brendan Rodgers doing that way. Many other managers and getting snapped. I see him do it with the players right enough once we celebrate at Ibrox right enough, which will do me fine rather than pictures that the Rangers manager celebrating with other managers. But these things, you, you just take it with a pinch of salt and just move on. You do. Ah, main, fo ah. main focus is Celtic for me. Absolutely. Every time. Rangers manager does. Every time. Paranoid and proud, that's me. Others would say I'm a bit of a pap at times, but paranoid <laughs> and proud um, because I think you've got to look at things like officials and everything else that goes on. In the circus that we call Scottish football, and uh, the next match day is going to be, of course, tomorrow, early kickoff against Motherwell. I want to start off, though, because we're going to be talking about the team, Lloyd, and uh, who you think should be selected and why. You're saying concentrate Motherwell will come back to Lazio. I'm going to throw in the central defensive partnership. Maybe we should get to know each other for Lazio. We'll talk about all that kind of stuff. 
But before we do it, let's focus on Brendan for a while. So we've got Brendan Rogers uh, back at the helm. We knew what we were getting with Brendan. Um, there's no way he's become a worse coach than the one that left us when he did. Um, and I've argued over the last couple of months that I think we've actually got a better coach than the one we had first time round. People might say, oh, you know, invincible treble, we've already lost a cup. I get all that. But I just think that there is a, a, a difference to his demeanour and there's a difference to his approach. And the style of football, I think, is pretty similar. But I think he has learned in his time with uh, Leicester. And I'm not saying they were punching above their weight because they've had some recent success prior to Brendan going to the club, Lloyd. But his record at Leicester, other than that last season, was fantastic. Winning a domestic trophy, getting into that top six of that particular league, a couple of seasons running, taking the team to the semi-final of a European tournament. And for anyone who says that, but it was only the Conference League, would you be happy if we got to the semi-final of a European tournament, Lloyd, regardless of what that European tournament was? I know yeah, I'd be, I'd be delighted. You would you'd see his progress. Ah, you would see his progress. So when he comes in, I don't think he divided opinion. I think there's a section of the fan base who weren't happy, and it was based on the way he left. It wasn't based on his ability. It wasn't based on any of that. It was just based on the way he left. And then it's going to be a case now of slowly but surely turning these people round. And I, and I remember getting asked at the time, and I said, that well, you, you do that by being successful. You win games, you win trophies, you'll turn people round. And every single manager that um, has managed Celtic during my lifetime, and I was born at the end of 1978, I was born during the 10 men winning the league season when Billy McNeil was in charge. Every single manager, I have backed them. There's never been a manager that's came to Celtic and I've thought, right, you know what? I might have fancied some more than others, but I've backed them. You know, we've had rookie managers like Liam Brady coming in in the early 90s, first managerial position. We should never have made that mistake, but we did. And we made the same mistake again with John Barnes. We brought ex-players back like Tony Mowbray, who had done pretty well at Hibs and West Brom. Didn't work out. But I liked the cut of his jib. He was talking about a football utopia, playing with wingers, playing entertainment. Didn't work. Ronnie Dyla comes in, completely supported him. Some might say it didn't work. Ronnie himself spoke about it during the week, saying that he wasn't ready for the job. At the time, you might have thought that, but we supported him, Lloyd. We didn't say that. So when Brendan comes back into the club, I'm thinking he's the best gaffer we could possibly attract to Celtic Football Club at that time. Some people said it, it lacked a bit of vision or a bit of creativity. Ange was a creative appointment. Ronnie Dyla was a creative appointment. But I thought Brendan was the correct appointment. And slowly but surely, I think he's turning people onto that way of thinking. Winning games at Ibrox is always going to curry favour. But when a wee guy runs on the park at Tony Macaroni and instantly Brendan's instincts are that I'm going to go and help him, shove a steward at the way, return them back to the crowd. I don't think it was a deliberate ploy to curry favour, but it does. You know, that is the result, is that bit by bit, Lloyd, people are turning into Brendan Rogers fans again. Um, what's your take on it? Because I, I was already there. I had already bought completely into Brendan. Um, do you think he is slowly but surely turning the tide on anyone who doubted him? Well, if I take myself back to the last week of May and start of June, just before Cup Final, and obviously back then the murmurings were coming out that Ange was going to Spurs, I was in the pub and everything with all my mates, and we were all talking about it. Who does it, If Ange did go, who should the next Celtic match be? And I was adamant. I did not want Brendan Rodgers back. Adamant is anything. But then after the cup final, and I kind of let my heart overrule my head on it, I thought, well, he's a Celtic man at heart. He's the best man on that list that I can see for the job. So I slowly but surely turned around, and then you look at images last week of the young boy running on the pitch, and Brendan going straight in to defend him. After all, he's a young Celtic supporter, and as Brendan said, so he wanted to make sure that he was protected and that he got to just see some of his heroes, and then return them back to the crowd. So things like that, everybody will start turning around to Brendan. The most important thing is winning games of football as well. And if it brings the league title back to where it belongs, and obviously gets us out of this Champions League group stage, then everybody will start turning around and thinking, right, we've got a really decent manager again. He's bought back. You can see as well, obviously, the way I think he's learned better for his time at Leicester, mm -hmm. which, which I think has also benefited us as well due to 
style of football. Obviously, he knows the long term deals that are getting done recently as well. That he's building that structure of a team again, what he did the first time round. But he's learned that, and he even said that I think in one of his articles with the press, that if the player doesn't want to be there now, he's not going to hold on to him. Yeah. Like what he did before. So he's mm-hmm. he's learned for that. So things like that also help us as a club. And that's the kind of thing you're wanting with Brendan coming back. You're wanting him to also develop that man not just benefit him as a coach, but also benefit us as a club. And I no. think it's just worked hand in hand now. It definitely has. Uh, JP and I had a really interesting discussion about that very subject of uh, Brendan and coming back and the acceptance, the universal. I mean, he was universally loved first time round. I, I, I've never met anybody who up to that point where he, where he left. I, I don't know a Celtic supporter who didn't love Brennan Rodgers and everything he brought to the, the equation. Uh, the players he brought to the club, the trophies he brought to the club, but also there was a lot of structural things behind the scenes that he implemented and introduced to Celtic. He wanted Celtic to act and behave like a, an elite football club 24-7 and he implemented a lot of the change at that particular time. Um, and, and people go on about how you know, his attention to detail boy, was mm-hmm. astonishing. Um, and I remember uh, hearing Kieran Tierney talking about a presentation, which was, you know, it blew a lot of the players away. He comes in and he, he gives you a presentation. This is my vision for this football club. This is my philosophy. And, uh, you know, there might be some players who don't buy into that. And I think, uh, you know, if that was the case, they wouldn't be at Celtic. You've got to buy into what, what Brendan's doing. Um, give us a wee like if you're watching the video today or at any point during this week. And I know there's loads of people do catch up, um, particularly uh, those who watch Axom in Australia, Japan, America, and all over the world. Give us a wee like on the video because what happens is um, it's all about this thing they call the algorithm. And to this day, I'm not quite sure if it works, but I believe that if you give us a wee like or a comment, then um, it does help us out and it gets you popping up on various places on YouTube. So there we go. And during this particular show, we will be asking you for comments, your view on certain subjects in relation to Celtic. Today, just before I came on live, two jerseys came through the post. One sent from Australia, all the way from Australia. I'll be giving you all proper kudos on the socials. Um, Celtic jersey signed by Billy Conley. There you go. And another one. Amazing. Another one dropped in, signed by Martin O'Neill, Chris Sutton, John Hartson. Fantastic. I'll be giving you all shout-outs for that. Um, And, you know, Kevin McDermott, for anybody who isn't into their kind of 80s music, Kevin McDermott uh, ran the Kevin McDermott Orchestra. That was his band. Um, And he... Actually appeared on Axom. I'm going to repost the session. The session was phenomenal. He appeared on Axom maybe three or four years ago when we used to record up in Stirling and he played us an acoustic session and he told us about his love affair with Celtic. And um, Kevin's father very sadly passed away quite recently. And, um, you know, big shout out to Kevin and, and I hope you're doing okay. He's a great guy and he, he's always supportive of a Celtic state of mind. And he has offered to give us one of his tour jackets it's a denim jacket. I know that Double Denim in the comments is, might be interested in bidding on it. And it's got the embroidery, Island Records, Kevin McDermott Orchestra. These are the types of people, the types of things that are happening in the background, Lloyd, right, that I like to concentrate on. I like to put my focus on the positive. There is a community out there who have been following Axom and supporting Axom and disagreeing with Axom for years. And I'll tell you this much, the positivity and the messages and the DMs and the emails that we get far outweigh all that negative nonsense. So if you see something negative, it's easy to get drawn into it. I would much prefer to focus on all these positive things that people do for people who need help, like we, Jamie Tierney. So big shout out to every single one of you. Thank you all. We all love the support. And uh, we'll keep doing what we do, no matter what. Barry O'Sullivan, can't wait to see how the boys play tomorrow. Getting excited about this team's potential. Hail, hail. I think it was... um, it was easy to get frustrated in the early days of Brendan because of a number of factors, Lloyd. One of them was we'd lost Ange. JP mm-hmm. pointed it out yesterday. You know, we, we lost Brendan and we were all gutted. And Neil Lennon came in and did what he had to do. And he steadied the, the ship and he got us over the line and we won a treble. And then we loved Ange and we lost him and we're all hurting. And we bring in Brendan in the back of your mind, you know that what's happened before. So there was a period where... A lot of people weren't actually enjoying the transition from Postacoglu to Rogers. But, you know, as as some of the commenters are saying today, 
there, there's a feeling, as Barry says, there's a feeling that rumbling under the surface here that we are clicking into place and we're going to see the full style of this Brendan Rogers team. Hopefully it's tomorrow that that clicks into place. I do hope so, because you've seen parts of it at Livingston last weekend where it just it did look as if it was starting to click. Because obviously we've been talking the last few weeks that some performances haven't been great. We've only played such and such minutes, decent football and that. But now the team look as if they're actually pulling together all in the one, one way. And it, it's just ready for... I, I, I really do believe somebody's going to take a hiding very soon for this team. It's just certain players are just hitting... Peak form right now. They are, they are, and we're going to be talking about some of them actually. Um, you have the late great Tommy Burns behind you, and I've actually got Carlton boy Tommy on my mug. There we go. Uh, just a coincidence. That's one from the Social Recluse guys, uh, the Pan and Arrow guys. You, they've got a shop in Glasgow. Check it out. Dermot O'Connor. Good afternoon from a sunny Kildare. Uh, Motherwell at the weekend is a good time to build on our recent form. Great to see Carter Vickers back in training also. Yeah, Brennan Rogers was asked about Carter Vickers again for about the 17th week running. Um, he is in training, but he won't be playing this weekend or indeed against Lazio. He expects him to be coming back after the international break. There will be an international break and we're using that weekend to uh, select a Celtic team to go and play the rock up at James McGrory Park for the centenary. Now, Lloyd, if you can imagine how much a privilege it is to be in a room with people who say, by the way, we want to ask someone to put the Celtic team together. Now, that happened. And that happened probably back in 2019 because the centenary was 2020. But we all know what delayed that. So then I got the old um, phone book out, started asking people if they wanted to play. And it was the... It was the love and the respect of St. Rocks, I think, that made it easy because people were agreeing. If they were available, they were agreeing. We know that Scott Brown agreed and then realised he was double booked. That would have been a big name. But there's a few other announcements we're going to be putting out today and over the weekend. Uh, last night, I started telling people who are going to be in a dugout for Celtic. So we already knew John Clark, the great John Clark, a Lisbon lion, is going to be in a dugout. It's just bizarre. And alongside him, uh, there are going to be three other members of the management team. Tommy McIntyre spent 14 years at the Celtic Academy, producing loads and loads of great footballers for the club. Currently at Queen's Park, he's also going to be in there with John Clark. So, phenomenal day. Sold out after 48 hours. I'm sure people will be trying to climb walls and um, you know fly drones and all that kind of stuff to get a bit of the action. So, what we're trying to do, we're in discussions to live stream it and we'll put it on the channel. Uh, Paddy Lovely, but as I said yesterday, I have no idea how to do it, but I'll find out and I'll get somebody who's got a bit of knowledge to do it for me. Paddy Lovely, it's the voice of reason, Jim Orr, going to be on today. Well, we call him the Oracle, don't we, Lloyd? Yeah, we do call him the Oracle. <laughs> With a double R. Uh, no, he's not. He, he, Paddy, he comes in once every fortnight um, and obviously we do have other people coming and going on a Friday. Brian Degnan is a regular on a Friday. Young James French, now known as the Shamrock Shadow, he comes in on a Friday. Lloyd is a permanent fixture, as am I. Um, and Jim and Alan Morrison appear once every fortnight and once every month, respectively. Now, we notice it if a regular doesn't turn up for their daily dose of uh, Axon. And it actually gets pointed out, and it happened yesterday, Lloyd, uh, and I'm delighted to say, and I was going to do the old Jack Nichols in voice because that is my favourite movie of all time, The Shining. But there he is, Jungle Lion. Welcome back. Round of applause, everybody. Um, superb. He's back. He's back in the room. Double denim. Talking to you earlier on. You must have heard us. Your ears must have been burning. Happy Friday, folks. Hope you've all got a great weekend lined up. Well, how often is that uh, great weekend ma made or broken, Lloyd, by the result on a Saturday? You know what I mean? You could oh, have yeah. plans this weekend and it could be ruined. Or indeed, you could be going out with a spring in your step. Now, Barry, I'm really sorry. I can't speak with any kind of authority on golf. I've never watched the sport. I've never played the sport. I'm sorry, and I hope you are enjoying it. And everybody that's into the golf is enjoying it, Lloyd. It's one of the ones, if you're into it, you really are into it. I've never held a golf club in my life. I've held my dad's golf clubs. I don't ever think he used them either. So anything about golf goes right over my head. I don't even understand it. All I know right. is that you put a ball in a hole. That's it. I might love it. And I could be a brilliant player or I could be absolutely chronic. Who knows? The way, it's going, with my, the way it's going with my knees, I would probably be better at golf than what I would be at football at the minute. So that, that kind of rules me out. 
So you're not going to be a mascot on the big day doing it at the Rock, okay? I had you lined up, you and Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's the, obviously Jerry is in the squad. I think Jerry's done a great job mascot in that one so far. Oh, there's more to come, by the way. More to come this weekend. Keep your eyes peeled on the social channels. Feed the Bear is supporting the channel. Thank you very much for that. And good luck at the awards. You say bring back the double PJ and team. Hail, hail. Yeah, we're up for a couple. Um, and I don't mind shouting it for the rooftops. I just think because there's a lot of people support us. So if you get nominated for an award, then it's a big thank you to everybody that watches the show, supports us, gets involved in a charity initiative, comes along and watches us at the events and gets involved there. And yeah, I would love to go down and get a couple of awards. Just to be nominated is a phenomenal achievement. So well done to the team. Um, and yeah, that'll be November down at Liverpool. Hopefully we can come back with one or two. Now, I'm going to start with the goalkeeper. We're 20 minutes in, we've not even got to the goalie. We're just 20 minutes on the, the bold, Brendan. Um, by the way, there's a couple of announcements coming today. I cannot wait to get them out there um, for this game. Goalkeeper, Joe Hart, of course, took a red card for the team. Lloyd, you've not had an opportunity to talk about that. I've not heard anybody arguing with the red card, to be honest with you. I think it was just um, one of the, those moments uh, whereby once you're in motion, you've had it, anything can happen. I'm not saying he was out of control, but anything can happen after that. I mean, Joe Hart might have taken a really dull one from the, the striker. Um, it's a 50-50, but the, the connection was there. He gets the red. And I pointed out during the week, someone mentioned it after the match, 750 games, that's his first red card. So he's not a dirty goalie. It's not something, he's not a harsh, rash goalie that dives out and does that type of thing, Lloyd. But the result of that is he's suspended tomorrow. We're going to Fort Park, Motherwell, Decent outfit, very, very good drilled side under Kettlewell, um, who I think speaks pretty well as well. Uh, you know, and I think Rogers has got a lot of respect for him if you go by anything Rogers has said about him and his team. So it begs the question, and some people yesterday were saying to me, Well, that's not even a question. Scott Bain's got to play because he replaced uh, Joe Hart at the weekend. He's the backup, he's in a Champions League squad. And and my take, my angle on it, Lloyd, and you might agree or disagree with this, is Seagrass, it's not like he's an unknown quantity. Maybe in a Celtic jersey. It's not like he's an unknown quantity. He knows Scottish football. He's played in games like this. He's been under the cosh at Dundee United in, in a great number of domestic occasions. He's played at all the parks all over the place, as has been. But my point is this. We have just seen an unprecedented defensive crisis in terms of injuries. The same thing can happen anywhere on the park. And I just think it's important to have sometimes your third choice get in a game. Now, by the way, I'm not handing out Dolly Mixers here. It's a, it's a Celtic jersey. It's a big deal. But I just think Seagrist needs game time. He's played two games in over a year. It's not enough for any professional footballer. So on a day like tomorrow, I just think, you know, and it's not a slight on Bain. I'm not his biggest fan. It's not a slight on Bain. I think he plays Seagrist. What's your take on it? Yeah, it's an interesting take, that one, because you, you would like to think Seagrist would at least challenge Bain for that jersey tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Rather than, but you see him in training clips, and if, but you don't ever see him on the bench or nothing. It always seems to be Baines on the bench, hearts and goals. So going by that, you would expect Scott Bain to get the jersey tomorrow. But the, the signing of the secrets now is just, it makes you wonder, why did we actually sign him? It, well, because he's not contributing anything. No. He's just stagnating. He's like that James McCarthy role, where he just stagnates in the background. Yeah, you know this, right, Lloyd? I think there's a bigger discussion on that one, right? Because Seagrist, I'm putting in the same bracket as Burnaby and I'm putting him in the same bracket as Kobayashi. Because I think when we went into this pre-season and at Brennan Rodgers' first transfer window, I'm looking at those three positions. You could probably also throw in a striker, but I'm looking at those three positions and thinking we need a left-back, a goalie, a centre-half. And I'm not saying that Joe Hart was going to get dropped or Greg Taylor was going to get dropped. This was before any dip in form in Taylor's uh, case. I think we need strength in those three positions. I still think we need to strengthen goalkeeper and left-back to challenge those two players. We've went out and bought about half a dozen centre-halves and it's no work because they've all got injured. But those three players, they were the ones that came in this time last year. And uh, Kobayashi came in a wee bit later because... And of the Coglu and the recruitment team knew that these were areas we had to strengthen, but not one of them has strengthened the team. Not one of them has challenged for a first-team jersey. And I think it drops into the uh, conversation we had last week 
about that second season under Ange not being, in terms of recruitment, anywhere near as successful as the first season. Uh, and people are getting frustrated maybe in the pre-season transfer window, but I would extend it back to January and even the pre-season before that. Um, removing Jota and Carter Vickers from the equation, because obviously that was part of a, a plan that had started 12 months previously. So why is he at the club? He's, he's at the club to challenge for a, for a jersey. Is he doing that right now? No. Is there an issue at training? We'll never know that. So we don't know in terms of the attitude and and how he has been with Rogers. Um, I know that there was discussions about him leaving the club. It didn't happen. And by the way, Motherwell are no mugs. So we're going to have to be at the top of our game. But I don't think we've seen anything from Segrist to suggest that he, he isn't the, the same short stopper he was at Dundee United, Lloyd. You don't lose that. He's, he's lacking in game time. And it's a good opportunity in my, in my view. And uh, we'll need to wait and see till about half 11 tomorrow morning as to whether or not Brendan Rodgers agrees with that. But um, it wouldn't be the first time he's disagreed with anything that I've said on this show. Uh, Davey Boy McCauley. Hail, hail, comrades. Is there any way to watch the live shows like a subscription? We're talking now about when we're on stage live at a venue uh, with an ex-Celtic player or a couple or even a treble of ex-Celtic players or a one-off payment for each show where they recorded. Davey, phenomenal idea and we have considered it but, and there is a but, um, when you do these live events, one of the big things that the guests ask you to reiterate to the crowd is that it's alive, it's an in the moment. It's one of the ones they don't want recorded in case, um, you know, whatever's been recorded goes viral, is used against them, et cetera, et cetera. Quite a lot of these guys have punditry gigs. And the minute you say something, and it could be in jest, the heat of the moment. A live event, I guess what I'm saying is a live event is different from a live stream. So there might be opportunities in the future where it's a different type of gig and we're able to do it. And the, the controversial element uh, might be removed from the from the evening, but we will be able to live stream it. So yeah, great shout. And we are hoping to live stream the St. Rocks game as well. We're working on it. Um, moving into the, the defensive areas, we'll start off with the centre halves, we've got Lazio coming up, Lloyd. Um, we know that Carter Vickers hasn't made it. We know that Lager Bielk is suspended, and we know that Nat Phillips is back in training. Uh, when asked about Nat Phillips, Brendan Rogers said that he could be back for this weekend, so that's looking good. And uh, obviously, that would leave him, Liam Scales, and Yuki Kobayashi, as well as uh, Tomoki Awata, available for selection. Again, looking ahead, you told me not to, but looking ahead to Lazio, I'm thinking, right, Scales and Phillips have played 45 minutes of football together. Now, I didn't expect Phillips to be back, but if he is back, we've got to we've got to give them 45 minutes. Now, I don't know if that's a starting position, Lloyd, or if it's the second half, but I reckon they've got to play 45 minutes together. <laughs> I'm going to just completely contradict everything I just said before I even come on this podcast already. <laughs> and it will just be Phillips and Scales for me. Because you, you do need minutes into Phillips' legs before this game against Lazio. And obviously, you kind of need want that partnership to build quickly as well. Because Lazio's a completely different ball game to what Motherwell's going to be tomorrow. So with that game on the back of this one, then you kind of need to think ahead of that one. So, once again, just contradicted everything I said before I came on. But that's all right, because that wasn't recorded, so you're fine. <laughs> um, but with regards to that, my thinking is definitely to get that uh, understanding. Because if you look at this, the, the form of scales, and he's been getting a lot of plaudits, and rightly so, you've also got to look at the fact that there's been a kind of chopping and changing of his partner. I mean, one of the, the strengths of Ange Postecoglou's side, Lloyd, was the fact that we had that central defensive partnership that you could count on. It was Starfelt and Carter Vickers. And as well as losing Starfelt, the player, and everything individually that he brought and all the attributes that he had, as well as losing that, and I've said this before, I, I was gutted that we were losing the partnership because it's a hard thing to get. You know, you can go through the Celtic teams. I've mentioned Mowbray today. Mowbray couldn't get that part of the team right. He couldn't get the central defensive partnership right. And it was during that period that we brought in quite a lot of centre-halves 
and we just couldn't get the blend and, and we couldn't get the understanding. He dismantled a partnership that some people weren't fans of in Steve McManus and Gary Caldwell, but they were ultra effective for Gordon Strachan over a period, I think, about three seasons. Because Gold Caldwell came in in season two under Strachan, didn't he? And I think, you know, that partnership was very underrated at the time. It's only now that we look back on it. So that was my biggest concern. So we brought in a lot of centre halves and one guy who was already at the club is the one who's really shone and really stood up, and that's Liam Scales. Um, he'll be playing, I guess, left side of the central defensive partnership, and if we bring in Nat Phillips. And another thing I would say again, it would be a bad idea for me to throw in someone like Kobayashi, and I know that he got game time against Air United in the testimonial the other week. I also think it would be a bad move to play a water there because um, I think a lot of people's perceptions, Lloyd, of a water is having watched him as a centre-half and a right-back. Actually, when you watch him as a midfielder, that that's the Awata that I think can do as a job. Yeah, I agree with that one in a while. I think he's far better in midfield than what he is at centre-back. Because did, did they not play centre-back in the cup-final as well? Yeah. I'm sure. Aye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I thought that. So, yeah, it, Awata is a good player, but he's not going to get into that midfield. That's the only thing. That midfield's just far too strong at the minute. No, you're right. And, and there's other options um, in there as mm -hmm. well, probably ahead of him. And it looks as though Rogers is playing Hatati through a probably a bit of fitness issue, a bit of form issues as well, but he's playing them through that. So the defensive, central defensive partnership of Phillips and Scales, it would not surprise me if it started, but definitely we need to get 45 minutes in the legs. Um, what about Ralston and, and AJ? They're kind of first names on the team sheet. Someone in, in the comments might say, well, if you're playing Seagrest every now and again, you should maybe play Burnaby every now and again. You should maybe play Ralston. But I don't think you do it uh, on a game like tomorrow. We know that Joe Hart's back for Lazio, right? So you're going to be playing a goalie for one game. Um, however, AJ and uh, Ralston are obviously, we hope, available. No, not Ralston. Um, AJ at right back and uh, Greg Taylor was I giving Ralston a game there? Greg Taylor at left you were back. Giving Ralston a game. Right. I, I know you love Ralston in that podium. I but... do. Yeah, my favourite player. Absolutely, one hundred percent. But no, I, I'm not playing him tomorrow, and I'm not playing Bernabe tomorrow. I, I need. I think you need to get that understanding in the defence. But also, I think the, the full backs are clicking for us at the moment. Taylor's taken a wee well. Maybe we've we've moved more to an inverted kind of role for him as well, Lloyd. I wouldn't be mm -hmm. changing that up tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be changing either of them. And to go back on the comment to Taylor, I, I think we've all been kind of guilty of saying that he might not fit into Brendan's system, but mm -hmm. he's once again, he's proven us all wrong again. So hopefully he'll have an opportunity tomorrow. Greg Taylor's a guy who seems to always have to come and prove us wrong. But again, does that also point to what we were talking about earlier on about Brendan Rodgers and how he's developed as a coach and he's looked at the situation and thought, well, you know, Greg Taylor was brilliant for two years. Let's try and get him playing that style of football again. So, Because it, it has definitely changed. I think I noticed it in the St. Johnston game, playing more of an inverted role. But for the first few games of the season, that wasn't the case. No, it wasn't. Um, I think I first noticed it around about the Dundee game when he started to come in inverted. So it's, it's something that obviously Brendan's worked on with him and obviously the other coaches as well, that that's where Greg Taylor's game as at its best and obviously you've got Alistair Johnson on the other side who'll bomb down the wing so Taylor's better defensively whereas Johnson I think is better more attacking wise in that defensive partnership so on that this is the whole point of why during the transfer window I think we were a bit all disappointed that we never signed another left back because you thought right well it's just Taylor's going to be in that position and if it has a bad game then you've got no one else to really rely on so that, that's, I think that's still an area position for us where we'll look at in other transfer windows. Mm -hmm. But at the minute, Greg Taylor is back to his best, I would say. Yeah, he is. And I, I would still say this, though. I think we've seen enough of Burnaby to know that he's not going to make that impact that we maybe would have expected from a boy of his age. You know, for that fee, it's not happened. And... He's now played under two managers, so you, you start to wonder, you know, there's a trend developing there. When we go, and I don't think it's going to happen in January, but I think eventually we are going to have to strengthen it left back. It's still a, a problematic area when you start looking under the surface. If that's your first pick, is he backed up? 
sufficiently? I don't think so. So we need to bring in another player there. What's your thoughts on the central defensive partnership against Motherwell? Let us know in the comments section. Should it be Nat Phillips and Liam Scales? Liam Scales definitely starts for me, and it's just a case of who plays alongside them. Durban Kilchie, Glasgow Celtic will win comfortably. 3-0. Five subs used for the last 30 minutes. Um, yeah, that would be a brilliant score at Fur Park, actually. I think Jim Ward would be happy if that score. Only happy when he scored the third, though. Only yeah, well, happy definitely. when he scored. He's, he's never comfortable at a football game until we're 3 nothing up. Um, I was talking to somebody. Please, again, let me know in the comments section if this is true or otherwise. I was talking to uh, one of the old heads talking about Glasgow Celtic, right? Because I've seen the, the conversations around the fact that it's the Celtic Football Club. But I have heard, obviously, the song. Uh, with Glasgow Celtic and I said right okay um, have we been referred to as Glasgow Celtic for a long time and they explained to me that it was to differentiate between Belfast Celtic and Glasgow Celtic that's why the Glasgow started coming into kind of common parlance in the, the kind of early years that might be a myth let me know in the comment section but I love I still love hearing people calling it Glasgow Celtic uh, so thanks for that the urban culture and Alan Robertson. There's a great documentary on Belfast Celtic. Seek it out on YouTube. Actually, um, Alan Robertson. Good to hear from you. Let's hope we don't rush Big Carter Vickers back too quickly. Make sure he's a hundred percent and bleed him back in gradually. I mean, this is the thing with a player that's so important to you, though, Lloyd. Right? You're coming on into Champions League games. If Carter Vickers was fit, you'd play him against Lazio. It's, I, I totally get what Alan means there, but he's so important for you, isn't he? He brings so much to the team. There is this kind of insistence, get him in as soon as he's available, get him back in. But that's what's happened last time, and he obviously had a, another injury. Yeah, I, mean, I was just literally about to say that as well. So I completely agree with what Alan says. You don't want to run back because you don't want him kind of breaking down and injured again for even more of the season because he's already missed quite enough key games for us. So and he's one of our most important players. So you, you want him back, fully fit, in the team, no injuries, and back in his centre-back spot, right beside Scales. Aye, aye. He's just got a coolness about him, you know. Um, and I think Scales is one of the success stories so far of the season, undoubtedly. There, there's real Ralston vibes going through the performances of Liam Scales right now. Uh, Keith Oakden, hello all from Plymouth. He normally says sunny Plymouth, so maybe the, the sun um, hasn't got its hat on today, Keith, unlike yourself and your avatar. Mikey Boy, hi oh hello everybody, happy Friday. Matt O'Reilly is looking a fantastic player for us this season and will only get better. Um, his goals and assists and defensive work is ex excellent for a young player. Roll on tomorrow and Mikey thinks it's going to be 4 nothing. so Jim will be happy for even longer <laughs> if your prediction is right. Um, and we're going to go through a few other points coming through. But before I do that, Xander Mack, I don't even know if this is rude because I don't know what it means. OK, so I'm going to bring it up and I hope I don't offend anybody. Please let me know in the comment section. What does this mean? Afternoon from a four pegger in Fort William. What's a four pegger, Lloyd? What is it? Don't have a clue. I, Neither do I. I don't know if it's golf related or not, but... Hey, I don't what? know either. Let me know in the comments. Have I upset anybody for bringing it up? I don't know. Um, and double denim. Good luck to Axel. And of course, Natasha Miko, because Natasha has been nominated for Best in Women's Football at the same awards ceremony. Um, get voting, guys. If you haven't already, always room for another trophy or two. Yes, there is. Uh, I totally uh, endorse that comment. Again, I'm going to throw this one to you because I don't want to like just dismiss it because I have no understanding of it, Lloyd. Is Celtic Park in EA24? The answer from me, FJT, is I don't have a clue. I can confirm Celtic Park is in EA FC24 because I've been playing it all morning so far before I came on. Before I, I had go a in, feeling. Before I go to my work and everything, I thought, need to get a game EA FC and make sure I, my Celtic team's built up well. There you go. I, I kind of knew. I, I'm more of a sensible soccer guy on the Amiga. Right, let's get into the midfield. We'll start with Matt O'Reilly. He's been mentioned already, and he's been talked about by Brendan Rodgers in relation to this new contract, and I found these comments very telling. This is what we do, Lloyd. We hear a press conference from any Celtic-related figure, and we go through every single word of that, and we try and figure out everything that's going on. And he was talking about Matt O'Reilly's contract. He's spoken to Matt. 
he's told Michael Nicholson what he wants, as in Brendan Rodgers has told Michael Nicholson he wants to keep Matt O'Reilly. And he also spoke about the fact that when that bid came in, he's telling those in power, we can't lose another. We can't lose another first teamer. Which is wise. I mean, I, I think there would have been serious meltdowns had another first team member of this squad uh, left the building during that transfer window. What do you make of the comments by Brennan Rogers uh, before we go on to the performances, O'Reilly? Yeah, I think the comments kind of back up the way O'Reilly's been playing, and you, you kind of do also want him to sign that long term contract kind of thing just to obviously protect the asset as well. Because I, I would say. Maybe I will be here another year to two years before anyone on the comments says I'm already saying I'm generally not because I generally do love the way Matt Ariel is playing this season. He's probably my favourite player so far. So he's he's really up to his game. Really up to his game. You can see it defensively and attacking. Obviously, I think in the Rangers game he sent Todd Cantwell flying as well, which was always quite enjoyable to see. And then he's chipping in with goals, which was severely lacking for his game last season. So he has come on leaps and bounds and Brendan really is getting the best level. Yeah, that, that's the tagline. Why the rise of Matt O'Reilly should continue at Celtic Park. Now, um, we are always going to be exposed to big money bids um, because there are leagues out there with bigger uh, bank balances than Celtic. They're richer clubs. I would never... I, I, I just don't subscribe to this notion, Lloyd, that these teams are bigger than Celtic. I'm not having it because a club in the, the first or second tier of English football can outbid us on wages uh, and in transfer fees in many, many cases that they're a bigger club than Celtic. They're just a richer club. They're in a league, and by default, by being in that league, they get more broadcast revenue, et cetera, et cetera, and that's why the money's there for them. Um, so I, I would never, ever accept that these, these clubs are bigger than Celtic. Uh, absolutely not. I mean... It was Brennan Rodgers in his first time at Celtic speaking about what would happen if Celtic played on that platform, you know, on the the platform of an English league, for example. It would just it would just multiply massively, and fan base and and merchandise and uh, sponsorship and broadcasting deals and the types of players we could attract to the club. So we're always going to be open and exposed to these vultures circling Celtic Park every transfer window, and of course we 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 found out that there was a ten million pound bid for Matt O'Reilly. I've been looking at the social media feedback on um, Brendan's comments, Lloyd, and of course, a few people have picked up on the fact that maybe the maybe the club wanted to sell him and Brendan had to say, no, 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 keep him. There's no way that player goes for 10 million quid in my view. No way. No, he's definitely not a 10 million pound player now. Not the way he's no. performed this season. Absolutely uh, not. I would say double is when you start talking for one of his legs, but definitely not a 10 million pound player. He's 20 to start with. It was like when uh, AC Milan made an inquiry for Jimmy Johnston and it was 100 grand and Jimmy John, uh, Jockstein's response was, for which game? So I think when it comes to Matt O'Reilly, £10 million, pound, knock it out of the park, that's not happening. And then you have another season um, of development and improvement because I think we've seen that so far. And also in the Champions League because I thought right against it, right up against it, Matt O'Reilly had a very, very good game against Feyenoord. And I, I pointed out the fact that he was absolutely done in by the time he came off the park. I think it was the 79th minute. Yeah, it was. And, you know, but with nine men and with one of your midfielders not being great on the defensive front, you can understand that. So Matt O'Reilly, for me, at the very beginning of the season, I pinpointed three players that I thought were going to go on to another level under Brendan Rodgers. And it was Matt O'Reilly, Rio Atate and Lila Bada. So at the moment, I reckon I've got one out of three. But we're still in the early stages of the season. And I think that the other two could also benefit as the season progresses. Um, also, of course, wrote a list of 10 guys that I think should have left the club. And on that list was, or were, rather, Liam Scales. And um, who else was on it? Stephen Welsh, who's just got a new contract as well. So I think the other eight are away, um, other than maybe one or two of them. I think but most Tumble's still there. Oh, David Turnbull was on that list. But that that was with the footnote that I love Turnbull as a footballer. I just don't think he's going to get the games. And I looked at the beginning of the season like he was going to get the games. And he's obviously dropped out of the start 11. So Matt O'Reilly, he's an undroppable player for the Celtic side. So th there's no question that he'll start tomorrow and he'll start alongside Callum McGregor. The question, though, is who plays with them? Is it a question? 
is it now Hatate O'Reilly McGregor without missing a heartbeat? Is that what it is now, Lloyd? Is that where we are? That's what I'm at. It's Hatati's. We all know when Hatati's on a game what he can do. And you've seen the way he moved for that, just to win the penalty in that that space, and then obviously the ball through for Taylor because that space opened up for him in that run. So for me, Hatati plays again tomorrow because I think he might be pivotal in opening up Motherwell's defensive line, especially with Keogh go up front as well. So I've kind of also jumped forward to the forward line as well. Yeah. But no, with the midfield, that was a conversation for weeks and weeks before every game. Who plays alongside O'Reilly and McGregor? And obviously, there's the, we do have a lot of options in there. David Turnbull's had a few games. I think uh, Odin Holm has looked good. I don't, I'd need to watch the Kilmarnock game back because that was a, a poor performance. It was a poor team performance. I need to look look at that game again to see how he performed in that match. But I'm not writing him off. I like Awata in there as well, but Hitati is the first choice. And I think that coming back to full fitness and getting through um, the issue of form, I also think he's having to adapt. Because you imagine, yeah. under Andre, right, I don't know if this is the case, but I got the feeling Hitati, for some managers, might be deemed like a luxury player because of all this defensive um, data that people keep pointing to to say that he doesn't track back, he doesn't have the, the ball-winning uh, kind of mentality, never mind ability, um, in that side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think he was a type of player who was given a bit of free reign under Ange Postecoglou. Lloyd. That's the impression I got, and I don't think he's getting that under Brendan Rodgers. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think under Ange, because it was always fast flowing attacking football, it, it kind of didn't show as much. But because obviously Brendan's style of football is a bit more possession based, I think you can see now that when we under especially in Champions League, we're under caution a wee bit. And it stands out that he doesn't do the defensive work as much because he, he was still playing that high line mm-hmm. and basically supporting Kyogo up front. So it kind of stands out when he's not doing defensively work, but when he's attacking, he's still one of our key players. And oh, I think yeah. in, in games in the league, and obviously maybe at home games in Champions League, he's going to be a key player for us. And you just know that he's going to play Hollywood passes at some point in the Champions League. And they're going yeah, to be... That 40 yard. Oh. Thing I was just going to come at one point and it'll just come off right at either me either or Kyogo Street and it's just going to go right in the top corner. Yeah, it is. It is. And, I'll, and you know, when it does happen, I'll be delighted for him. Alan Robertson is suggesting that uh, the Celtic select side wear my favourite Celtic strip of all time, the centenary strip versus St. Rocks. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Is there a particular jersey you think we should be wearing? The Axom Celtic select because over the last couple of days that has been. Um, the source of much of my work behind the scenes. And I've loved every single second of it, I've got to say. I love football jerseys, you know that. I'm a bit of a a strange breed when it comes to that. Now, Paddy Lavery, PG Day, that's a great suggestion. You should raffle them tops off for charity after the game. What's going to happen, Paddy, is um, we have player sponsors. So, you know, we've got a lot of players that have been getting um, announced on the social media pages, and we'll go through them all again in the next couple of weeks. And there's a couple more to be announced as well, and there's an opportunity for businesses or individuals to sponsor a player. Um, so there are still opportunities available. If you are interested, then please let us know because um, there are some big names available to to sponsor. And what happens as part of that sponsorship deal is the sponsor gets the the match worn jersey signed by the player. But the ones that are left over, Paddy, um, because I think we need a big squad. You know, it's a bit of a legends game. Some of these people don't play that regularly. We're going to need a big squad. We're going to have maybe 18 or 20 players. So there'll be a few jerseys left over. I'm going to ask all the guys to sign them in the dressing room after the game. And like you say, we will add them to the collection for sell the jerseys. Brilliant suggestion. And thank you very much, as always, for getting involved in the comments. Um, If you want to do that, all you need to do is subscribe to us on YouTube. It's free of charge. Daily content, fully produced content, at least once a week. That's going to increase. And we have confirmed a huge, a massive um, interview for next week. So stay tuned. Mm-hmm. I can't give too much away. Uh, you know, no, you, we, you're uh, not giving much away. I know. I'm trying to build that tension. Who will it be? <laughs> Who are we interviewing next week? It will be on the channel. Subscribe. Hit the notifications bell. And uh, let me know what you think of the interview. We're going to be talking about up top. I'm going to start on the right-hand side. There's been a lot of talk this week about Dyson Maida for obvious reasons. Um, he has proved a lot of people wrong. He is a phenomenal team player. Um, there are elements to his game 
that people focus on, but I think that all the good attributes outweigh them um, significantly. And he's he's become a player that you rely on. He's a, one of those cliches, first names on the jersey, on the jerseys, first name on the team sheet. Um, I've got football jerseys on the brain. You, right you hand know. side, I do. Right hand side, though, it's not as cut and dry, is it? I mean, no. I was looking, I was looking at last season. I was looking at Jota's games uh, for Celtic. He obviously jumped between. Uh, he switched between the two wings. So going into this season, one of those guys that I thought was going to really kick on was a badder. And by the way, he still might, and I think he's got it in him to do it. But he's out injured. And since he's gone out injured, we've, we've utilised three different right wingers, James De Forest, Lewis Palma, and also Yang, who I think has shown up really pretty well. Who do you play tomorrow? Yeah, that's that's a good question, actually. Because I'm, I'm kind of wondering myself who do I play right wing. I felt sorry for James Forrest last week when I had to come off. Because I thought, and my wife put, my wife actually told me not when I came home for work on the Saturday night. She's like, why were you so angry James Forrest started? Under no circumstances were I angry at all that James Forrest started. I was just surprised that he started. But um, yeah, that, that jersey is basically any of the wingers to, to grasp at the minute while Sabad is out. So I think on form we would go with Yang. Because any time he's, he's played so far, he does look quite creative. And he looks as if he can likes to take his player on. So I would maybe go with Yang in the right-hand side. And Maeda, we all know Maeda does in that left-hand side. And obviously, yeah. Maeda is sublime. He is. He, he is. And he's got it in his locker. He's shown it more than one slide. It's not the first time I've seen him pulling mm-hmm. something. He's pulled a rabbit out of the hat before. Um, on the right-hand side, I'm, I'm going to go back to my... I know you're going to tell me take one game at a time. I'm thinking <laughs> Lazio. I'm thinking Lazio as well as tomorrow. I think we've got enough if we approach the game properly. Um, we've got enough to win that game tomorrow. It won't be easy. I think Motherwell are a very, very good side. They've done so well uh, under Kettlewell. Under a, a tricky period, actually, but prior to that. And I think that going into the game tomorrow, I, I'm going to look at the pros and cons. So, so Palma. He was he was thrown into Feyenoord, wasn't he? So he's yeah. shown the gaff for something to make your your first start in the Champions League for your new club. I think he's he's shown the gaffer enough for him to have the confidence to do that. Um, I don't think he had a great game, but I don't think he had a, a particularly bad game. He was quite quiet for periods. He came into it, and then he then he was brought off in the second half. So I'm not writing Palma off. I've just not been as impressed with him as I have been with Yang. I think Yang probably hasn't had a bad game. He had he had problems against Kilmarnock. He couldn't stay on his feet. That was his issue against Kilmarnock. That I think that was more to do with the, the surface. So I think Yang, it wouldn't surprise me if he starts. But whatever whatever Brennan Rodgers was doing with, with James Forrest at the weekend might still be fresh in his mind. Um, what Was James Forrest playing at the weekend because with a view to something that he's got planned against Lazio. I don't know if he's planning two games ahead. It wouldn't surprise me. Does James Forrest play? Um, now, if it's on form, and from what I've seen this season, I'm playing Yang every day of the week. No doubt about it. If it's uh, with one eye on the Lazio game, and he thinks that, you know, we need to... I don't know in terms of his his uh, status and his, and his data if Palma has got the defensive qualities, but I do remember... Uh, Forrest being played on the right-hand side in front of AJ before in a big game against Rangers at Ibrox. And it's down to his experience and the fact that, you know, you know what you're going to get from him. But people in the comment section, like your wife, might be saying, you're thinking about playing Forrest. There's going to be games this season Forrest starts. I actually don't think it's going to be tomorrow. I don't. But if it is tomorrow, I think it's with a view to Lazio. I think the choice will be with a view to Lazio. Um, You can be a rabbit in the headlights if you start in the Champions League. Yang, do you really throw him in against Lazio? Some some might say, why did you put, put, buy him if he's not ready to play, Lloyd? I don't know if you do, because we've seen what happened to Palma. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. It's Palma took his time getting into the game against Feyenoord. And obviously on Wednesday against Lazio, it's going to be a different type of game. We're at home. We're going to be a bit more attacking, hopefully. And... <laughs> That's well, obviously an Italian team, so they'll be sitting back in that and hopefully counter attacking. So you kind of obviously need to play to their strategy as well to try and break them down. But then does Brendan Rodgers think about that and they obviously play Forest tomorrow? 
Or does he think, right, I'm playing my best winners here. I'm going to go Yang, Maeda, or else even maybe bring Palmer back in. So, this is the thing. We're not Brendan Rodgers. So as much as we would love to be in an in position, I just I think he'll go with Yang tomorrow rather than Forrest, just on that basis of the Lazio game. I think Yang, there's an immediacy about him. He likes to get the ball, take on his man. Yeah. And I think since, and I'm not comparing the two players, but there's an aspect to their, their play that is similar in that they can take a guy on. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, whereas, and I've said this before, Abada, Maeda, it's speed, it's anticipation, it's the use of the, the space behind the defenders rather than jinking past the player or two. I think Yang's got that to his game. It's something that we've been missing since Jota left the club. I'm not sure if Tilio and Palma will bring that to the team. I've not seen them enough, but we know that Yang can do it. So, yeah, Yang and Forrest are the two names that, if either of them appear on that start and I love in tomorrow, Lloyd, I'm not going to be surprised. Um, Grant, going to bring you in. The conference, I would only like a final appearance, says Grant Liddell. Now, the thing with that, though, after this season, you don't want to be playing in the Europa or the conference because it means you've not won the league. Because uh, there's going to be, they're going to stop you dropping into other European competitions. So, yeah, I totally get that. If you are playing in the conference, it's probably because you've had a poor season in the campaign beforehand. Jean-Paul II. Um, don't forget McCarry. No, yes, uh, Lou McCarry came into the club, obviously an ex-player, an ex-Quality Street kid, and I've spoken to him uh, when I was writing the book for the Quality Street gang. And I've got huge respect for Lou McCarry, you know. I really do. Um, when you look at what he's doing for the... Um, less fortunate down in Stoke, you know, the homeless. It's phenomenal. And again, there's a few things online that, if you haven't watched them, give give, give a YouTuber search, Lou McCarry Stoke, and the work he's doing is unbelievable down there. But as a Celtic manager, wow, that was a that was a bleak, bleak time. It was almost like it was um, one of the board's last throw of the dice to try and and save their bacon, and, and uh, they bring in Lou McCarry. And it just didn't work. And I've spoken to a lot of players who played underneath or, or played under Lou and um, it just didn't work and, and I've spoke to Lou about it as well Lou McCarry but yeah I've not forgotten him John Paul I was behind him I supported him um, I was at the games but unfortunately it didn't happen um, FJT Brendan won majors with Leicester City yes he did he won the FA Cup um, as well look at this Mr Whip 55 PJ mentioned the 10 men won the league game I was at it what a memory wow that was May 1979. Uh, that is quite a memory. So are we just looking at the fact that uh, Kyogo and made a play tomorrow, or do you think that um, the strongest team is going to finish the game tomorrow and we might give the likes of O some game time? Because I think this season, I'm looking at O, he's not getting the goals. See, this is the thing, Lloyd. He was getting the goals last season when he was coming on. He's not getting that. And I think that he needs a wee bit more time on the park. Yeah, he definitely does need that bit more game time, especially when he's that second choice striker. He needs that game time on the part to get the goals. And if he's not getting that, then he's just basically sitting on the bench, not contributing again. So I don't think he'll start tomorrow, though. I think it will be Kyogo. But obviously, I do think O will finish the game just to obviously get him maybe a 10 15 minute spell just to get one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, he's a player that I do. I do like, but I do think mm-hmm. also that um, two things, either we start utilising Maeda a wee bit differently, uh, and I think Rogers alluded to that. He said that he thinks he's better up front. I found that very interesting when he said that after the uh, Livingston game. And we've seen a, a glimpse of that, obviously, in the pre-season when he scores his hat-trick against his former club. But if anybody's been watching Axom for long enough since uh, Liam Carrigan came onto the, the show, Liam has been going on about the ability of Maida to play through the middle. So it is something that I think we should do, but not uh, by dropping Kyogo. I think you're, you're going to have to look at the shape of the side if you want that to work. But again, I think that Brennan Rodgers has shown that he can adapt um, to any different uh, shape rather than be so fixed in, in, in one shape. So it's something we might see. Um, we've, we've had a talk through the start 11, Lloyd. Give me your prediction for tomorrow. I think 3-1. 3-1 Celtic. Well, we've not let a goal in now domestically. We've not let a goal in for four games, am I right? Four games, yeah. I, right. I, I'm just basing that on, I think, Motherwell, well, the past wee while, 
they have shown that they're a decent team in the league. So I, I do think, and especially at home, they've crowd behind them as well. I think they might sneak a wee go. Well, there you go. As long as we get three out, I can I can deal with that. Um, Brown Warrior, Brendan developed Forrest's defensive side previously at Celtic. Perhaps that's why he's getting some game time. And I think, yeah, he will get used. He definitely will get used. Um, I'm going to jump ahead, Lloyd, because I probably won't see you or speak to you again on Axon, that is, until Friday of next week. Give me your thoughts about Lazio. Be a tough game, but I'll go with what I've done. The last time we played Lazio, and I might stick a little two one Celtic victory bet on. Oh, that would be good. Yes, I enjoyed the the last time Lazio came to town. I've got my tickets for the game next week. Um, it all depends on whether or not I can get anybody to cover the Axon match day bulletins because you know this um, that is that has become a priority. That needs to happen, and if that happens, then obviously I can enjoy the game as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Let us know what your predictions are, both for the start and 11 for tomorrow and also for the score. Uh, let us know the score. Um, predictions for tomorrow's game against Motherwell as well. Um, I've really enjoyed that. If you want to get involved in the any of the campaigns that we're running, then get involved by um, following us on the social media, subscribing to us on YouTube. You can vote for us. You can help us to perhaps win an award or two down in Liverpool. And the link is underneath this particular video. Thanks, everybody, for getting involved in the chat. And thank you to Lloyd Patrick Jepson for joining me on a Celtic State of Mind. No problem, Paul. Cheers.